जय हिंद टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फ्यूल एंड कम्बेशन टॉपिक इज वेरी रिलेटेड टू मैकेनिकल मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट सब्जेक्ट इज अप्लाइड थर्मोडाइनिक्स दिस इज सब्जेक्ट कोड इज के फोर जीरो वन सो बिफोर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट फर्स्ट आई इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ आई एम दिलीप कुमार असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज नाउ वट इज फ्यूल फ्यूल इज बेसिकली कम्बेस्टिबल सब्सटांस विच कम इन कॉन्टेक्ट विथ एयर एंड देर इज प्रोपर बर्निंग देर इज प्रोपर बर्निंग एंड गिज लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ हीट दैट इज कॉल्ड फ्यूल सो इफ यू सी द एग्जाम्पल there is solid liquid and fuel and gases fuel if you consider the solid fuel that is wood coal these are the solid fuel if you consider the liquid fuel there is kerosene petrol diesel if you consider the gases fuel there is methane gas see these are the these are the examples of the solid liquid fuel now <clears throat> if we if i talking about the fuel so in come uh, every one want to express the how fuel is going to burn so there is basically if you write the uh, chemical formula for the fuel of any fuel suppose i i am going to consider alkene group like uh, cn and h2n Plus two, that is our fuel. When it come in contact with air, that will give the CO two and some amount of hydrogen. Now, now the equation. Now we will be balance the equation. There is n number of carbon, so balance it. N number of CO two. Now. H hydrogen is two uh, n plus two. Now balance it. How much will be the coefficient of the hydrogen? So balance. Then finally we say, say that the fuel is chemically balanced. Now I am going to consider air. Here for any fuel, if any fuel there is a combustion means there is a availability of oxygen. oxygen is needed for the combustion so in atmosphere there is oxygen and nitrogen is available in bulk so in if you consider by volume there is 21% uh, oxygen available in the atmosphere and 21% and nitrogen there is 79% by volume by volume so <clears throat> so this must be remember if we consider by the by the mass there is 23% oxygen and remaining 77% uh, 77% of nitrogen so first of all if we consider any fuel suppose cns2 n plus 2 uh, alkene group when going to react with uh, there is combustion that is air required for the combustion there in product is co2 plus water now we will express like this suppose there is combustion chamber cc combustion chamber there is reactants these are the reactants so we can just say that there is a reactants um, reactants these are the reactants here is the cnh2 n plus 2 and the second one is here here means there is oxygen plus nitrogen so how much amount of mole of uh, suppose we consider the one mole of air that means the o2 plus if you consider that 79 by 21 that is 3.1 like 3. something 
that is give you the one mole of air if you consider the one mole of air so oxygen plus mm, 29 by 21 into nitrogen that will give the one mole of air now these reactants when react that give that produce in production in products there is carbon dioxide water some other gases will also sometimes oxygen ability of oxygen excess amount of oxygen it flowing then in the product there will be oxygen also present so you will see later so <coughs> understand the combustion process now combustion is basically a chemical reaction in which uh, substance in which fuel or substance combined with air that gives some types of fluid some types of uh, flame and heat produces during the reaction there is some <coughs> heat is also produced or it may be sometimes heat required for the uh, reaction, uh, reaction so this q is basically the enthalpy of reaction if you going to discuss about the enthalpy of reaction for this phenomenon for this reaction so enthalpy of reaction we can just write down for this we can write like reaction that is equal to in product there is in th in, there is product of um, gaseous form in gaseous form plus uh, solid form so just write down the total total enthalpy in product minus of total enthalpy of reactants we can just write down it so enthalpy of reaction is equal to sum of enthalpy of product minus of enthalpy of reactants so this is the basically for the any for any uh, chem, any uh, chemical reactions so classification of fuel so if we classify it there's two parts one is primary fuel other is uh, secondary fuel so primary fuel is basically related to natural natural which is found in nature so if we consider the primary fuel consider the primary fuel so this generally primary fuel is basically basically in nature found in nature if you consider secondary fuel or artificial fuel so it is secondary fuel is found by primary fuel or prepared from primary fuel by processing or number of ways ways of uh, processing uh, then we can say that the there is a secondary fuel form now for any fuel suppose we consider a single uh, compound like single element that is carbon there is calorific value of fuel that is that is having a calorific value calorific value of fuel is defined as uh, how much heat is liberated for one for combustion of one unit of mass of carbon if we react with oxygen or air it will give carbon dioxide so by volume we can say that one mole of carbon one mole of carbon react with one mole of oxygen give one mole of carbon dioxide or we you can say that the 12 one mole means 12 kg of carbon 12 kg of carbon react with how much 32 kg of oxygen that will give you 12 plus 32 that is 44 kg of carbon dioxide is it clear okay so <clears throat> one mole of carbon react with one mole of oxygen that give you one mole of carbon dioxide or we can say that uh, one mole one kg of carbon one kg of carbon react with 32 by 12 kg of oxygen 
will give you 44 by 12 44 by 12 kg of carbon carbon dioxide so for combustion 1 kg of carbon that is required that give uh, 11 by 3 kg of co2 so 1 kg of carbon that is equal to 11.3 kg of carbon dioxide if you say that ki uh, how much minimum minimum amount of air needed for the 1 kg of carbon how will calculate so just write down the chemical formula just write down the chemical reaction if you write down the chemical reaction correctly you will find how much the amount needed for the combustion of 1 kg of carbon here yeah, just see, see the 1 kg of carbon produce 11 by 3 kg of co2 and 1 kg of carbon react with 32 by 12 that is react with 32 by 12 that is 8 by 3 kg of oxygen So one kg of carbon react with eight by three kg of oxygen will give you eleven by three kg of CO2. So minimum amount of air required for the combustion of this chemical reaction. So we just calculate the air fuel ratio. So amount of air fuel ratio is basically mass of amount of air needed that is divided by mass of fuel. <coughs> so here here one kg for uh, one kg of carbon need. 8 by 3 kg of CO2. So just write down the 8 by 3 kg of oxygen. Here we, the mass of amount of air. So here is the 8 by 3 is kg of oxygen. So convert it in air. How will convert it? 8 by 3 kg of oxygen. So already say that uh, in atmosphere, if air having 100 percent supports. So there is ability of oxygen is 23 percent by mass, and remaining nitrogen is 77 percent by mass. So just we have to multiply it by 100 by 23. That is the amount of air needed for the complete combustion of fuel or any fuel or carbon. You can just say that. So here one kg of fuel. So 8 by 3 into 20, 100 by 23. That will give you the mass of Or amount of air required for the complete combustion of carbon. So here is the calorific value. Uh, I am going to discuss. Going to discuss. So there is two types. One is higher calorific value or higher eating value. We can say that. Another is lower calorific value. Low, lower calorific or net calorific value. So higher calorific value. If we are going to define, there is in product. Water is in the form of uh, liquid form. If we just when going to dry the uh, fuel uh, CnH2 and plus two, suppose there is alkene uh, alkene group al uh, alkene group react with oxygen plus seventy nine by twenty one nitrogen, it will give you the sub amount of carbon dioxide. And and some water also produced. This water is in the form of liquid form. Then we can say that there is a there is enthalpy change. So enthalpy change during the chemical reaction that will give the higher calorific value of the that fuel. High, higher calorific value value of that fuel. Okay. If <coughs> if this water is in the Vapor form, we can say that there is a chances of condensation. So there is, suppose in a product there is water in vapor form, it is chances to condense. So there is, it will come into liquid form. So vapor to liquid, there is some losses. There is a latent heat of steam. Latent heat of steam, we can say that there is some m into h of g. We can just write down. So if you're going to Relate, relate these two terms: higher calorific value and lower calorific value. We can write 
higher calorific value is higher calorific value is is equal to lower calorific value plus uh, m dot into hfg hfg is basically latent heat latent heat of steam we can write it so here is written in the last the lower calorific value or net calorific value of any fuel we can write equal to higher calorific value minus latent heat of water vapor form okay now here is some basic uh, there is some units of calorific value we can express it in cgs form or we can express it in the same SI units the SI unit is a joule per kg if you are going to consider solid fuel that is a per kg if you are going to consider the liquid fuel there is a joule per kg same but in going to gases fuel there is a per unit volume so we just write down that in SI, SI unit joule per meter kilo in CGS unit in solid fuel there is calorie uh, calorie, uh, calorie per gram and in 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 liquid form the same calorie per gram but in gain gaseous form there is calorie per volume that is centimeter now next <coughs> there is a characteristic of <coughs> characteristic of good fuel fuel having a high calorific value uh, there is moderate ignition temperature there is low moisture content low non combustible matter low cost burn in air without much snow these are the characteristic of good fuel so <coughs> combustion should be easily controllable so this is the these are the correct these are the point which are mentioned is related to characteristic of good fuel <coughs> here is some formula which is experimentally derived for the solid fuel and liquid fuel how we will calculate the higher calorific value of fuel we will <coughs> just write or you should remember it higher calorific value is equal to 808c 8080c 8080 that is higher that is calorific value of carbon this 345500 calorie per kilo calorie per kg is related to hydrogen so h minus o by 2 this right then there is sulfur also available in the fuel so we have we know that calorific value of sulfur is 2 to 4 zero so multiply by this divide by 100 that will give, give you the percentage so we can just write down the formula higher calorific value is basically is equal to collective value of carbon into carbon how much percentage of carbon available and uh, related to other terms hydrogen oxygen and sulfur so by this formula we can calculate the uh, calorific value of any fuel okay so here there is this relation lower calorific value and higher calorific value lower calorific value is equal to high calorific value minus latent heat of water vapor form if you see this equation there is multiplied by 9h into 537 because of we know that latent heat of latent heat of steam is that is 530 37 kilo <coughs> kilocalorie so here hydrogen if you see the hydrogen so hydrogen react with oxygen that will give you h2 so how much just balance it 2 h2 and okay so one mole of hydrogen hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen so no sorry two mole so two mole of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen that give two mole of water <coughs> so one mole so one mo two mole two into two that is four here if you see the water there is 18 16 plus 2 18 into 2 
टू इंटू फोर के जी ऑफ हाइड्रोजन गिव यू थर्टी सिक्स के जी ऑफ वाटर सो वन के जी हाउ मच नाइन के जी ऑफ वाटर दैट्स वाइज वी जस्ट मल्टीप्लाइड इट बाई नाइन सो इफ द देर इज देर इज रिलेशन इफ गोइंग टू फाइंड आउट देर इज मल्टीप्लाई देर विल बी मल्टीप्लाई बाई नाइन बिकॉज ऑफ वन के जी ऑफ हाइड्रोजन रिक्वायर नाइन मोर ऑफ नाइन के जी ऑफ वाटर नो गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट न्यूमेरिकल based on it so there is uh, we have to find the higher calorific value higher calorific value means higher calorific means gross calorific value same term calorific value and lower calorific value is basically net calorific value net calorific value <coughs> so if you see the numerical parts there is carbon percentage 80% hydrogen is 8% and uh, oxygen 8 oxygen is 8% also and there is sub sulfur is also present 2% as as content is equal to 2% and given that latent heat of the steam that is given 587 calorie per gram so calculate the gross calorific value so we know the formula we have seen that gross calorific value is equal to 8080c let's just put the value of carbon percentage in the given the given formula we have, we can we will find the um, value of we will find the gross calorific value in kilo calorie per gram if going to consider or going to find out the net calorific value that is given with the gross calorific value minus latent heat of steam into multiplied by 9% so 9 by 100 into h h is percentage is given 8% so multiplied by multiply it by 8 so that will give the net calorific value is 8500 so always higher calorific value is always greater than lower calorific value or we can say that <coughs> so see the results these are very so air calorific value is greater than lower calorific value so <coughs> so now going to <coughs> discuss about the bump calorimeter for determine for finding out the calorific value of solid and liquid form so understand the basic principle basic principle is certain amount of weight quantity certain amount of fuel is uh, taken in the calorimeter and hitting it and there is some amount of uh, heat uh, uh, there is some amount of steam is formed this steam is going to heat the calorimeter calorimeter inside the uh, inside the calorimeter there is a uh, water level available so it heated the water also so just balance the energy equation write down the how much heat is supplied to the certain amount of fuel and how much heat is taken out for the uh, raising the temperature of the calorimeter just balance it that will give the calorific value of the certain quantity of fuel which are taken that the we, we can find out the higher heating value or calorific value of that fuel so here is the diagram to see there is a calorimeter here is certain amount of quantity is taken sample is taken now now the process is going to heat the certain quantity of heat certain quantity of um, sample is heated so this heat is going to supply it now <coughs> this sample is going to heated up it transfer the heat to the water and other component so balance the energy equation we can find out the calorific value of that sample suppose you have taken the mass x amount of mass is taken 
in gram for the fuel sample and w is mass of water in calorie meter and a small w is there is a water equivalent of calorie meter thermometer or mtc and there is temperature initial temperature in the in calorie meter temperature of water in calorie meter is t1 and final temperature is uh, t2 and that fuel having the calorific value is c so how much the heat is supplied to that fuel we just multiplied mass of fuel into calorific value mass of fuel is x into calorific value of that fuel we have to calculate let us see this much amount is supplied to the fuel that will be equal to the energy or heat taken by the calorimeter so there is mass of water available in the calorimeter so w and some water equivalent of calorimeter so small w it raises the temperature from t1 to t2 so t2 minus t1 just write it there is some specific heat of the water so we just multiplied by s so basically calorific value or high heating value of that sample is that sample is is equal to w plus a small w into temperature difference into specific heat of water divided by fuel mass of fuel is taken in the gram that is x so this calorific value will give the higher rating value of that sample that fuel now next going to discuss about the gaseous fuel we when we are going to discuss about the gaseous fuel we will consider it or we will going to uh, going to uh, or going to consider in uh, volume i so we have to calculate the calorific value in volume so how much heat is liberated per unit volume so natural gas is basically if you see the natural gas then is it is the mixture of hydrocarbon of methane and ethane and some other percentage of hydro some other hydrocarbons also But but majority is eighty to ninety percent, ninety five percent of methane is available in that. So <coughs> we can say that methane is dominating factor, dominating dominating factor or dominating uh, uh, dominating fuel or in the gaseous fuel. Only five to twenty percent. So today lecture is over. so next lecture we will consider uh, next lecture we will be, uh, we will continue next class uh, thank you thank you so much